have told me how excited you are for this panel, as am I. I'll start with Jason Cousins. You met him yesterday. Jason is the founder and CEO of Glint, a game-changing organization that has transformed gold into everyday electronic currency with the Glint app and MasterCard. The 2008 financial crisis, which exposed the vulnerabilities of fiat money and banks, was his wake-up call and inspired him to act seeing gold as the antidote to financial instability and inequality, leading him to architect Glint. Glint has now over 200,000 registered users and holds 2.3 tons of gold. Glint is revolutionizing the way we think about money and value. Please welcome to the stage, Jason Cousins. <laughs> Good to see you, brother. Next, Lynette Zhang is the founder and CEO of Zhang Enterprises a company which focuses on developing community and a sound money system globally. After her experiences in the banking and the stock markets, Lynette intensely researched historic global currencies and their life cycles. This led to the uncovering of central bank corruption and the ongoing exposing of Federal Reserve data and her prediction of the Great Recession following the housing market crash in 2007. Although Lynette was one of the first to speak about the reset on YouTube, this has now become the known agenda for the World Economic Forum's Great Reset, and it is now discussed at great length by the entire economic education ecosystem online. She's the host of the Lynette Zhang YouTube channel, where she creates multiple weekly videos to help expose the hidden truths which underlie complex financial and economic systems. Please welcome Lynette Zhang. Welcome. Finally, but not least, Andy Schechtman has been a prominent figure in the financial services industry for more than 33 years, during which he has served as president and owner of Miles Franklin Precious Metals. Prior to starting Miles Franklin in 1989, Andrew became a licensed financial planner specializing in Swiss franc investments and alternative investments. At Miles Franklin, a company that has recently eclipsed nine billion in sales, Andrew has developed an operation that maintains trust, collaboration, ethical behavior, superior customer service, and satisfaction to better serve their clients. Please welcome to the stage, Andy Schechtman. Thank you, sir. Well, I know how excited everyone is. There's a lot of intellectual horsepower on this panel. I'm going to start with one question for each, same question for all of you. And maybe we'll start. Yeah, are, you want to start? We'll start with. Are we with, using this now? I believe so. Okay. Is that Hello, what? can you hear me? Yes. Okay, cool. We'll just pass it along. But let's start with how do physical precious metals fit into the digital world? Well, they didn't mm -hmm. <laughs> until I had the idea that they should. <laughs> um, look, I, th I think that uh, what, is, what is digital? I mean, it's, it's just a really a communication system. Um, and, and I've purposely actually kind of shied away from using the phrase digital gold, for instance, because it kind of implies that it's, it's not gold. You know, I tend to say it's you know, using gold in electronics, electronic payments. Because really all we're doing with, for instance, with Glint, with the app, is just, it's just a medium, a secure medium, to get instructions from our clients. We're just the custodian uh, and the servant of those customers. And if they want to buy some gold, one cent's worth of gold, or sell it, or if they want to send it to somebody else, or they want to, they want to use it in a transaction with a MasterCard, they're just using that as an instruction. So fundamentally, the word digital I think sometimes can confuse things. We're talking about physical gold, certainly with Glint anyway. It's not always the case, as we've seen with ETFs and, and things like that, which are not backed by gold. So I think you've got to be very careful about making sure you understand what you're working with. But certainly with us, something that I've been really keen to focus on is that we don't let the technology get in the way of what it is we're working with. And so, we actually don't use a, a, a blockchain with Glint, you know, and we don't use an ETF structure or anything like that. You know, when you're, when you're buying gold on Glint, you're buying 
a milligram or a gram or a kilo or multiple kilos of gold. That is your gold that you own. And all the app and the platform is doing is a secure means to um, take your instructions, really. And it, it doesn't mean that... It, of course, lots of things can be built on top of that. When you introduce technology to something, you create a level of um, scalability um, that allows, you know, low latency, highly scalable platform that allows all kinds of wonderful things to happen. So when I paid for my Wi-Fi on American Airlines at 35,000 feet in the air, you know, what's going on? Well, I was just giving instructions to the platform to sell my gold just enough into the currency of the merchant to pay for that transaction. Um, but really what we're building is not just a way to be able to buy gold or save it or send it or spend it. What digital enables gold to do is to participate in electronic payments, but also to create a global gold-based financial services system built based on gold. And you know, we can, we can build anything that we want to on top of those kind of digital platforms. Anything that exists in the existing incumbent financial system, which is, as we all know, based on a corrupted form of store of value, we can do on, on top of a gold-based platform. In a similar way to the DeFi movement within crypto, you can do the same with gold. There's absolutely no reason why we can't do that. Excellent. Linda, same question. Well, I would also say that it can democratize gold ownership, which is really, really critical, especially for those people that don't have that much money to work with. So they can buy a small piece. And of course, you guys know I always have my props, you know, and so here's an ounce of, of gold. But in the digital world, I mean, that's the direction that we're going in. And so we have to be able to commingle the two. And what it really does is it keeps money honest in any form. And that is what is critically important to me is sound money platform. So you know, we have to move along with the times, and there's a lot of wonderful things. But for me, it also has to be convertible. Because if, it, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And if you can't convert it into back into the physical form, is it really there? How do you even know? So it is trust. It is confidence in any form, whether it's digital or it's physical. You know... I've always had a problem with the adversarial relationship between the crypto camp and the hard money camp because to me they're very symbiotic and we should be, instead of adversarial, it should be a complementary situation. But what really pushed me over the edge was a man that I find to be one of the smartest I've ever encountered, and his name is Zoltan Pozar. And Zoltan used to work at the New York Federal Reserve, and now he, I think he's at UBS, I forget, but his explanation of where we are right now in history, he calls it Bretton Woods III. Bretton Woods I is when we took over for the pound sterling at the end of World War II. Bretton Woods II, I guess you could say loosely, is when we became the petrodollar, and arguably that is a, um, that's something that is debatable whether or not it has long legs left in it. But Bretton Woods III is a system that he said would be defined by transparency. To me, that's blockchain. That, that's perfect segue into XRP. And commodities. Where, and, and pardon my French, okay, I'm sorry, but let's just be real. The US dollar shit the bed so bad that who's going to ever drink that Kool-Aid again, right? Yeah. Who's going to drink that Kool-Aid again, right? So a marriage between blockchain technology and 5,000-year-old money, where the central banks of the world have bought more in the last three years than any time ever, should tell you that we're on the same team. And instead of being adversarial, I think not only does your portfolio become exponentially stronger having a interest in both, but I think in order to make a new system that is widely adopted, you have transparency via blockchain, 
and immutability via gold and silver, which have been money since the beginning of time. So it's not either or, you guys. It should be both, and it only makes your portfolio that much stronger. Lynette, how does the digital system support building community? Well, it's global, and we have to go global, and we have to have uh, the ability to come together. So really, the digital system would really support the global community, which is critically important right now, as we transition into a new social, economic, and financial system. And community, for me, has become the single biggest issue and, and the most important part of my work, local and global. But on the global foundation, I want to have us to have a seat at the table in the new system. So that's where it fits in. It gives us, it gives us potentially the ability to grow that global community and have a seat at the table and help make the decisions on what this new system looks like. Jason, you mentioned, you talked about this yesterday, but a lot of these people were at Lynette's event. <laughs> Talk about the building momentum across 25 U.S. states to make gold legal tender. So, last August, I found out that um, during proceedings at the Texas Senate on something to do with transactional gold legislation, which I knew nothing about, that Glint had been mentioned because they said, look, if we, have a, if we enable and authorize transactional gold, we'll need a platform like Glint. So I got in touch with them, and I was blown away by this grassroots initiative, not just in Texas, but actually it came to, be, I came to learn 25 US states across the United States of America that are using a right enshrined in the Constitution. If you don't know, check it out now on your mobile phones. It's Article 1. Section 10, Clause 1 of your U.S. Constitution says that a U.S. state cannot make anything a currency except gold and silver. And of course, this is the wonderful privilege you have in the United States. It's the United States of America, not the United Provinces of America. The states can keep the federal government in check. And I think I see certainly, I see the states suddenly waking up and going, we're going to use our powers for once and actually push back yes. on that's happening. And you know, government that's closer to the people I think is better for the people. You actually have the tantalizing possibility in January, February, and March of next year to get behind the legislators, some incredible treasurers. There's, there's some, in some states, governors and lieutenant governor support for this. You guys have the opportunity right now, this is happening now, to actually vote in a sound Money currency, isn't that what we've been waiting for? Yeah. You have the right, to, you have the ability to do it and it's happening and it's gonna happen faster than you can think. January's gonna be here so fast. And this is, this is real, this is really, really happening. But I mean, you might, you might be thinking, well, if Glint exists, for instance, why does the state need to get involved? Well, we've all seen what the federal government and federal institutions can do. Our friends at the SEC and their ability to uh, interpret laws or make them up as they go. The states need to, number one, protect the rights of citizens to be able to use gold and silver as money. And secondly, by authorizing it as an official currency of the United States of America, I mean, it's going to send shockwaves around the world. What it does mean is that the IRS should not be able to charge capital gains tax on your sound money just for keeping its purchasing power. A, a question for all of you. you know, we're all investors. Our, our invested thesis is evolving all the time. What percentage of our portfolio or what percentage of your portfolio should be precious metals and, and explain a little bit of the logic behind your number? Let's start with Andy, please. I think you work backwards from, from the reality that everyone talks about a $34 trillion debt. Let's put that in perspective. A trillion seconds ago was 31,688 years ago. So when we talk about how big the numbers are, they are unobtainable. You'll never fix them. And that excludes the unfunded liabilities. Medicare Part B is over 90 trillion underfunded. Medicare Part D, the prescription, 22 trillion underfunded, Social Security 77 
trillion underfunded, and that excludes um, you know, military and government pensions and all the entitlements. We are broke, and we are insolvent, and we are going around the world weaponizing the dollar, saying, you can do this, but you can't. We can do whatever we want. We can give money to the Ukraine, but China, if you give one penny to Russia for their war machine, we will sanction you, your companies, your banks, and even Beijing itself, so don't even try it. And so what I would say to you is, it seems to me that the dollar is in a state of terminal decline, and I'd work backwards from there. To me, gold and silver are not an investment. When I started my company 34 years ago with my father, he said to me, there'll be one rule or I'll fire you. All right, I'm 20 years old, what's that? He says, you, um, you'll buy some gold or silver every two weeks when you get paid. So when I talk about gold and silver up here, you guys, it's not an investment to me. It's, it's money, it's wealth. It's wealth that's outlived two world wars, German hyperinflation, the Great Depression, every pandemic, and anything the world's ever thrown at it. And ask yourself, is this world a little messed up right now? Is this world a little bit different than it's ever been? Is what's happening around the globe and within our own borders scary? I mean, it is to me. So I'd work backward, backwards from there and say, what exposure do you want to a system that is in terminal decay? What exposure do you want to a system that you will never, ever normalize your balance sheet? So what are the options? Inflate, default, or maybe find a villain. And that villain would be Xi Jinping and OPEC and Putin, and how could they do this to us? That's debatable. But the point of it is, is that I think we are at a road where if you are not a contrarian, you're destined to be a victim. And if you're fully invested in dollars, you're destined to go broke. And so the marriage between blockchain technology and gold has never been more important to really think about on a deep level. And for me, if I told you how much gold and silver I owned, I'd probably have no credibility. But I'll just simply say this to you, that I have far more um, comfort in having far more gold than any so-called financial advisor would say is prudent than being invested in dollars that continue to lose value and lose respect around the globe. To Andy's point as well, with all of that debt, we have to reset the system. So I don't like any of that exposure, and I don't know exactly what is going to survive it. I have an idea of what's not going to survive it. So 100% of my wealth goes into food, water, energy security, barterability, which is silver for me, gold, which is wealth preservation, community, spending time with helping build the community, and shelter. Because these are all the things we need to sustain a reasonable standard of living. And I want some purchasing power left to go into that next system. So I just, I'm a tangible gal, there's no doubt about it. And gold and silver in any form is monetary at its base. So I, I in fact, I'll put my neck on the line um, looking at the monetary velocity. I believe we are already at the beginning stages of the hyperinflation to clear off all of this debt to enable the new system to come in. So yeah. I'm, I'm all in. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I agree with both of you, of course, that, you know, gold is money. It's the only form of money, really. Everything else is credit. Central banks, ultimately, it's their currency of last resort for them. We've seen them buying unbelievable amounts. Um, and, of course, the system has, has, has been purposefully creating this veil across our eyes that, that kind of said, I was listening to one of your videos the other day, I mean, kind of taking the mickey out of some of these phrases they have in this uh, global financial system documentation about how reliable our currency is. I mean, it's a complete joke. You know, we're regulated, by the way, in the UK, and of course the regulators there are like, oh, you've always got to say, every single time you talk about gold's purchasing power, you've got to say, whilst we believe and see that the purchasing power of gold over time increases, we've got to point out that it can sometimes go up and down. When did you ever hear a bank saying anything about that and your purchasing power of your money? Never. And I think it's really important that we separate gold and we, and we, we see it as, as money. It's not an investment. 
Investments are really important for growth. They're important for our communities, as you say, that we invest in other people's businesses and other people's lives, and we help them grow, and in return, we get, we get, we get um, growth from that in our own capital base. But when we want to be able to, you know, money is something you should be able to save without risk, and you should be something you shouldn't spend when you want to. And I think, um, my, I think our, my first investor in Glint and uh, one of my first customers, he's now, I think, 92 years old. He said in a very posh English accent, he said, Jason, what I love about Glint is that it allows me to put my ready money into gold. And uh, of course, I encourage people, whether it's with us or some other system you can find to be able to, to do some of that. If all of you would take a, a chance or take an opportunity to explain your thoughts on what's happening with U.S. CBDCs versus the rest of the world. Andy, I'll start with you, please. Um, well...